If a picture is worth a thousand words, then wildlife photographer Paul Bannix has a lot to say. Bannock is an award-winning author and photographer who has spent years studying and tracking down owls in North America. Tomorrow, the York County Audubon Society will host Bannock, and he'll be speaking virtually about snowy owls. 207's Beth McAvoy has more. And it's kind of funny because in the, in the Harry Potter movies and books, the owls were a messenger. The owls truly are a messenger because they come from the places where we rarely see them they gave us a glimpse, and my hope is that we become curious about that messenger and what is the message. Paul Bannock has been trying to decipher the messages animals tell us about the natural world his whole life. I remember animals, frogs, salamanders, birds. They're my earliest memories. Growing up in a large family, one of 13 children, Bannock learned early on if he wanted to be heard, he needed something compelling to capture an audience. As I was growing up, the area behind my house was being developed, and I would go and I would draw pictures of these animals, and I would go back, and they would be gone in a few months. And so I would show these pictures to siblings and people and say, you know, this used to be here, but I can't find it anymore. No one paid attention in start, until I started photographing them. With a camera as his tool, Bannock realized he could paint a bigger picture about the natural world. Every habitat in North America has a story that can be told by an owl, with the exception of alpine tundra. So I can tell the story about every natural system in North America by following the lives of these birds to revere. Over the last two decades, Bannock has written four books about owls in North America. Right now, today, we have 19 species of owls in North America. When the first Europeans arrived here, guess how many species we had? 19. They're all still here. His latest is Snowy Owl, a visual natural history. Snowy owls are, to me, they're the Arctic ambassador. Since the environment is so unpredictable, snowy owls lay eggs every two to three days, no matter the threat. Polar bears, wolves, snowstorms, windstorms. She's on the nest on the treeless tundra landscape taking that punishment. It's no wonder she doesn't do it every year. From his animated language, it's easy to see Bannock's affinity for these creatures that's only deepened from thousands of hours of intimate and rare observation. And there are many times where I put myself out there in the Arctic, in the snow alone, and find nothing. And there are other times where falling from the skies. For every success, there are far more failures, but even those serve as an education. In general, you don't succeed, but when you do, it's well worth it. And when you don't, you have to figure out why am I not finding what I expect to find. There's nothing accidental about his award-winning photographs that have been featured in Bird Guides, the Smithsonian, and the New York Times. The one comment I, I don't particularly love is, right place, right time, because if only it worked that way. You know, it's like that old country song, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. So you can plan as much as you want, you have to. You have to know, you have to plan the day and the week and the year you, you go somewhere, but you also have to respond to opportunities and have to recognize when something is going to be unfruitful. The message he hopes each photograph brings is one of conservation and understanding. You know, one thing, there's an arms race right now between rodents and humans, and we use more and more powerful toxins to eradicate rodents. The problem is the rodents breed so fast that they become immune to these rodenticides. Rodents never become immune to the talons of owls, never. And if we cut down on the rodenticide use, owls can live alongside us and take care of the rodents and the insects that would otherwise and fast our fields or, or farmhouses. The solution to living in harmony with owls and humans being able to benefit from them might be simpler than we think. We can live alongside all the owls in North America. We can have them all live with us and it doesn't take much sacrifice. They don't need a pristine environment that, that has never seen the hand of man. They just need us to be aware 
of where they are at different times of the year, what they might need. You've spent so much time with owls. What have they taught you about yourself? I need to slow down. I need to um, let go of a strict agenda, that I need to pay attention, that I need to be more observant and sensitive to everything going on around me. I need to trust my intuition and instincts and that I need to be conscious of what I consume and to what end. So cool. And their eyes are just piercing when you, know, you look at them. If we didn't have the Olympics tonight, I think we could have a three hour special just of <laughs> owl photographs from Paul Bannon. Yeah. Because they are just arresting. They really are. They really are.